welcome to state of dk science in this guide we are going to learn practical infinite and early game strategies to form resources influence spots and rare weapons to make a wealthy community in a zombie apocalypse let's get to the science let's start with the resources number one the infinite trader trick if we have a lot of influence buying them will be the fastest way to form all kinds of resources but the important question is who will be selling that many resources? We already have learned how to make the red talent contractors always spawn in the same building in my previous guide and that is the trick we are going to use here. If not, you must learn it from the previous guide which has been linked at the end of this video. When a contractor spawn near us, we will be able to trade with them before they reveal their presence. Each contractor will be offering variety of items and resources which may include medicine, materials, ammo, gas cans, toolkits and also weapons. The only resource they never sell will be the food rucksacks. The melee weapons they sell offer a great value of parts for the amount of influence we spend so this trick will also be useful to farm a lot of parts. Once we trade with one contractor, we can exit to the main menu and start again to spawn another contractor in the same building. So if we have a lot of influence, no other trick will form resources faster than this. Number 2. Infinite Trumble Trader Trick The Trumble Trader will always be selling food and ammo rucksacks, but the important part is, if we exit to the main menu and start again before her timer runs out, she will respawn in the same building within a few minutes with a fresh inventory of items and resources. Number 3. The Play Card Supply Drop A younger community is where we need resources the most and the previous tricks will not be useful in that case because we will not have that much influence. So if you are looking to farm resources in an early game, promote a sheriff as your leader. If you have not destroyed all the hearts in your map, you will get the pre-legacy sheriff missions. Play a few of them until you get the sheriff winning allies mission. When you finish this mission, you will get an enclave benefit called play card supply drop. This supply drop only costs 150 influence with a super low 10 minute cooldown timer. This drop always includes two rucksacks in which one of them will always be a medicine rucksack and the other will either be medicine, ammo or fuel. This means each rucksack only costs 75 influence even in the lethal zone. So this will be the cheapest way to farm medicine, ammo and fuel in the early games. Number 4. Infinite Daily Materials Trick Staging area does the materials upkeep by producing the same amount of materials being used daily. So what will happen if we have two staging areas? The Cascade Hills landmark outpost has the same functionality as the staging area. So if we have both, one will offset the daily materials usage and the other will provide daily materials depending on how much are being used by our community. The same trick can be used in Heartland DLC by building both the utilities complex and the staging area. Both do material upkeep so we will gain daily materials if we build both. Now let's learn to farm influence. Number 1. The Dinner Bell Sieges If we are in Whitney Field or Church on the Hill, we can start the dinner bell sieges one after another to easily form 200 influence for each siege. Some players will recommend getting the haven device but it won't be necessary. Only the first siege may be longer but once it is over, it will temporarily provide negative 8 threat reduction so the sieges will only be 1 minute long from the second one which will not include any ferals and juggernauts. Number 2. Beer Crafting If we have level 2 still, we can spend 3 food to craft 4 quantities of 6 pack fresh beer which can be sold for 204 influence. Most importantly, if we have someone with bartending skill, we will get barley wine as an additional bonus which alone can be sold for 102 influence so a total of 306 influence for 3 food. Number 3. Painkiller Crafting If we have a pharmacologist and pill press facility mod, we can spend 1 medicine and 2 jugs of ethanol to craft 6 strong painkillers in the 3rd level infirmary which can be sold for 204 influence. If we don't have enough jugs of ethanol, we can convert them from food at level 2 still. Let's compare both the beer crafting and the painkiller crafting to learn which one is the best. 
Both methods almost offer the same value for the amount of resources spent, so choose the best based on your convenience. Number 4. Bulk Play Cure Crafting A younger community is where we need influence the most and the previous tricks will not be available in that case most of the time. So to farm influence in the younger communities, promote a sheriff as your leader and get the play card supply drops radio command. With the abundance of medicine truck sacks from these supply drops, we can easily make bulk play cures even in the level 1 infirmary and sell them for 500 influence. Each rucksack from the play card supply drops only costs 75 influence, so if we do the math, we basically make 350 influence just for 12 play examples if we have a pathologist in our community. Now let's learn to farm parts. Number 1. The Perpetual Parts Farming Trick If we have chemistry specialization, firecrackers can be salvaged for more parts than their crafting costs, so it is a perpetual parts farming trick. We can also farm too many parts this way and sell them for influence, making it a perpetual influence farming trick. Don't get used to it, we're probably gonna fix it at some point. Number 2. Salvage Furnace Stacking Trick Salvage Furnace increases the parts yield of weapon salvaging by 50%, but it will also stack when we have multiple salvage furnaces installed in our various facilities. Here is how many parts we get when we have no salvage furnace installed, here is how many parts we get when we have one salvage furnace installed and here is how many parts we get when we have four salvage furnaces installed in our workshop, auto shop, armory and forge. Number 3. Ammunition to Parts Conversion The CNC mill facility mod is considered one of the best ways to make parts from materials but from update 30, the fireworks crafting station facility mod has become a more efficient way to craft parts from ammunition. The Excel Firework shells from Firework Crafting Station can be salvaged for 5 parts each and we can make 10 shells from 3 resource ammo. That means 3 resource ammo can be converted and salvaged for 50 parts compared to 90 parts from 8 materials when using CNC mill. Most importantly, the parts yield from salvaging can be dramatically improved depending on how many salvage furnaces we have installed in our base. Also, this trick works in an instant compared to CNC mill which requires few minutes to get the job done. Now let's learn reliable ways to farm powerful weapons. Number 1. Spec Ops Vector SMG and MP5 to Spec Ops Wandering traders will have high probability to come equipped with Spec Ops Vector and MP5 to Spec Ops so we can kill them by zombies and loot their bodies to get their weapons. Killing regular traders does not have any consequences but never kill mysterious wandering traders and rare skill traders. When they die, they will not spawn for a few weeks. Number 2. G18 Auto Custom and MP5K Spec Ops Dr. Hoffman in the Hotline DLC will always be selling G18 Auto Customs and MP5K Spec Ops so we can buy them from her and transfer them to our campaign with the help of a friend if we have friends. Number 3. Operators m 4 one The Clio supply drop in Heartland DLC has 5 variants in which one of them includes Operators m 4 one So if we call for Clio drops from drone uplink in Heartland DLC, we will have 20% chance to get Operators m 4 one from those drops. Number 4. The Masterwork Assault Rifle Masterwork Assault Rifle is the best 5.56 rifle because it has all the features we need and most importantly, it delivers more damage than any other 5.56 rifle. It is the easiest gun we can get because it is a homemade rifle. If we have improvised weapon station from Trumbull Valley Bounty Pack, we can make this in our base itself with parts and materials. It can be made significantly cheaper if we have knowledge of engineering in our community. Number 5. Eternal Guards Infinite Rage and B50FG Eternal Guard and B50FG are few of the most searched guns of State of Decay 2 but some players don't know how easy it is to get these guns. Mysterious Wandering Traders have a high probability of selling these guns so if we play during our weekends, the chances of getting them from Mysterious Traders is very high. Once we trade with them, we can quit the game and play again in the same community for a few hours to spawn another Mysterious Trader within a maximum of 3-4 to four hours. I definitely believe you learned a lot of new things in this guide and if you wanna keep learning, 
check out these other guides and also subscribe to the channel to keep learning new things in the future.